So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, what we have is we have y equals negative 2 ln of x plus 4. And we need to graph this. And to graph this, we want to be able to identify the transformations. So you can see I have a plus 4. And I put that x in bracket or parentheses so we know that we're adding the 4 outside of the function. So therefore, that's going to tell us to shift 4 units up. Then I'm multiplying by negative 2. And that negative is going to tell me to reflect the x-axis. Right, right, right. Perfect. OK, so now what we need to do to do this, though, we need to graph our parent function. And the parent function is with no transformations, y equals ln of x. I'm sorry, y equals 2 ln of x. And then we are going to graph our, our general our final function with the transformation. All right. So the first thing is we need to create a table to graph this. All right? And again, I just like to make this very simple. I like to go ahead and determine you know, what are going to be my values. If I plug a 1 in for x, ln of x is equal to 0. 0 times 2 is just going to equal 0. So my graph is still going to cross at 1 comma 0. Um, and then I can just pick you know, really any point that, um, that I want to. If I, I don't know, let's just pick 3. So if I do ln 2 times ln of 3 to find the value, I'll plug it into my calculator. And I get 2.197 um, dot dot dot. It's going to go on and on forever. 1, 2, 3. I'm just going to approximate that at 2.2. 2. So at 2, 2.2. 2. So we'll do over 3, comma, 2.2. 2. All right. And again, this is approximation of the point. But you can see my graph is going to look something like that, where my asymptote for the parent graph is going to be x equals 0, where my domain is from 0 to infinity, and my range is going to be from my range is going to be from my range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. OK. So now what we're going to do is we need to apply these transformations. And it tells us to reflect the x-axis and then to shift the graph up 4. So when we're applying this, we need to reflect the x-axis. So therefore, this graph is going to be reflected about the x-axis. So instead of going over 3, up 2, I'm going to go over 3, down negative 2. So it would be 3, comma, negative 2.2. Now this point's going to remain the same, because when you reflect it over the y-axis, it's not going to be changed. Then I need to add 4. Well, if I'm now at 3, comma, negative 2.2, if I add sh shift this up 4, well, let's take a look at this first one. If I take 1, 0 and shift that up 4, it's not going to be over 1, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then this point, if I shift it over, it's still going to be over 3. But now if I add 4 to negative 2.2, right? now what that's going to do is that's going to take me back up to, um, let's see here. So that'd be 2.2. So if you go to go up 1. It'd be negative 1.2. Take it up again. Take it up two units. That'd be at uh, negative 0.2. Go up another one. Now you're at uh, point over 2. So now you're at 0 0.18. 2.2, 2, 1, 2. or 0.02. Now you're at 0 0.08. And then at 1.8. So now I'd be at over 1, up 1.8. So let's go ahead and da, da, da. So this point is now going to be at uh, 5, comma 1. No, I'm sorry, 1, comma 5. Right? And then this graph, if you do negative, and if you even look at this, just to go and confirm, if you do negative 2, Negative 2.2 plus 4 is now going to be 1.8. So um, this point is now going to be at 3, I'm sorry, 3 comma 1.8. All right? And again, my graph is reflecting, so it's going to be in that formation of the red. All right? So now I need to go and take a look at it and see, well, what exactly is my um, asymptote. Well, my asymptote hasn't changed, so my asymptote is x equals 0. My domain, just with the reflection over the, y, over the x axis, is not going to change. 
So my domain is still from x to infinity, and my range is now also going to be from negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you graph a natural logarithmic equation when you have a reflection over the x-axis and a shift, a vertical shift. Thanks.